Unexpected Brew. A Cinderella Story by J. E. Mueller. Chapter One. Before the sun could fully rise, I was up. Yawning as I turned on this light and that machine, I began the morning prep for my family's coffee shop. It was a routine I could easily do in my zombie-like state, a routine I had followed for far too many years. I had loved when Father bought this shop. It was a new beginning for us after Mother passed away. Something exciting and fun, a new adventure for our smaller family, even if at the time I was too young to use all the machines. Then she came in. I wouldn't say Henrietta was a cruel woman. I wouldn't say that she was lovely, either. In fact, the only thing I could say with certainty was that she loved her daughters and money, and not in that order. At first, I refused to call her mother. Then I saw how much it irked her to call her such, and did so with glee. Mother Dearest couldn't say a word against it, since it made my father so happy. Then he got sick, too. It was a hard couple of months once Father became ill, and we thought he would have that cancer beat. It wasn't meant to be. That winter, almost spring, we laid him to rest. Henrietta assumed full control of the shop, and I assumed full responsibility for the morning shift, the ordering, the stock, and everything but the bookkeeping and hiring. Henrietta knew numbers and how to strike fear into the rest of the staff, save her daughters. They were pretty and giggly, but neither could figure out how to steam milk, let alone brew a simple cup of coffee. Diamond, the eldest of the two, knew shoes and the latest fashions, which was great, except she spent more time fixing her makeup and modeling for the customers than learning how to do her job. Rose had the singing voice of an angel, which could make the job fun if she wasn't usually creating a bigger mess for us. Thankfully, she had few shifts since she was still in high school. The rest of the work crew learned quickly to ignore them if they wanted to keep their job. The regulars also either ignored them or came just to see them. This wasn't some ugly stepsister story. Both of them could have modeling careers if they wanted. Rose said I could too if I changed my hair. Diamond just laughed and said it would take too much work to make me pretty. Both of them I ignored. I liked my black curls. They were cute, springy, and usually a lot of fun. Sure, looks mattered a bit to me. But what really mattered was that I had nearly saved up enough to go away to university. The local college was fine and all, but I knew the only way I'd succeed would be to leave home. And there was no way Henrietta would help with that. She needed me here. No one knew how to work things as well as I did. Not to mention it would take several people to cover my duties if I left. It was about time they learned how to really run this place. So, silently, I suffered on. Soon, I promised myself as I made myself a cup of coffee. Soon, I promised myself as I set up the pastry display. Then it was time to open. It was after ten, the morning rush nothing more than a memory now, when my stepsister Diamond shuffled in with a yawn. Rolling my eyes, I made her a drink while she sluggishly put her coat up and tied on her apron. Diamond reached the front counter after a few minutes and slowly sipped her drink as I restocked the bar. "'Did you make sure there's charm in this, Arnessa?' She eyed me tiredly. "'Duh,' I replied flatly. "'Do I look like a level one mage?' The biggest reason our coffee shop was so successful was because of the magic we brewed into it. While neither of my sisters could make a particularly delicious drink, they were fairly well gifted in magic. Adding extra effects to drinks wasn't overly difficult. Some added charisma? Got it. Need to be extra alluring? No prob. Love spell? Well, my stepsisters swore they could, but that was beyond their skills. Truthfully, it was beyond mine as well. But who was I to say it didn't work? Sometimes that extra confidence was all you needed for your crush to notice you. Diamond just grumbled at me and set her drink aside as a rather handsome guy walked in. Instantly, I saw her perk up. It had been three days since she dumped her last boyfriend, and she was ready for something new. This one was exactly her type. He had great dark hair, almost a caramel brown. It was slightly long and messy, but not in a bad way. Sure, sure, he had dazzling blue eyes. I wasn't impressed. Who knew if he had magic and was just using a glamour spell? Simple glamour spells any mage could do. Hiya, welcome to Magic Beans, she greeted with a little too much enthusiasm. The guy offered a soft smile as he reached the counter. Morning. 
So handsome. What are we thinking to start the day with? It doesn't look like you'll need any extra boosts, she flirted, unabashed. He chuckled, but his eyes didn't leave the menu board. Well, what drink do you recommend? I don't want anything too bitter. Oh, you'd love the vanilla caramel swirl, she said with a sweet little bat of her eyelashes. The guy didn't seem to notice. Sure, I'll give that a shot. Maybe with a luck boost? What sort of flavor does that add? Diamond faltered for a moment. Uh... It takes the sweetness down a notch, but no noticeable flavor enhancements, I replied, as I started to wipe down the back counter. Yep, it's just a bonus effect, she beamed. Handsome mystery man met her eyes. Perfect. Can I get a medium, then? As she rang him up, I started on his drink. While the guy walked over to the pickup counter, I could hear Diamond giggle. With a glance in her direction, she was already on her phone, texting away, likely about the gorgeous guy that was in the cafe. Instead of paying Diamond, or her newest crush, any mind, I went on my task. Is she always like that? I heard him say, just loud enough for me to hear. I glanced over and watched him type away on his phone. Pretty much. I continued on the drink. He smirked. Well, this place still comes highly recommended. Guess it's worth a shot. Worth a shot? I gave a small laugh. <laughs> You'll be back for the drinks if the girls don't scare you off. So certain, huh? He had no trouble looking me in the eyes. I handed him his drink. Of course, I make the best drinks in town. I laughed. Have a good one. I turned to continue cleaning, ending the conversation. Did you stock the condiment bar? Diamond asked me, still giggly. Nope, I said, looking at her. It was fine half an hour ago. Is something wrong? I asked, surprised. Not at all, she smirked. I followed her gaze to the handsome guy now sitting in the cafe area. Sighing, I went back in to start on the dishes with Steph. This was not something I wanted to deal with. What's up? Steph asked as I joined her. Same old, cute guy, overly flirty sister. I rolled my eyes. Does he stand a chance? Steph sighed. He does not seem interested in Diamond, so we'll see. He might survive this visit. I noticed there wasn't enough for me to help with. Only a few dirty pitchers and a spoon remained of the previously intimidating pile. Steph just shook her head. This visit? Diamond can be persistent. Can be? I laughed, moving to check the inventory. I'd have to make an order tomorrow. Fine, fine, is stupidly persistent, Steph corrected herself as she finished the last of the dishes. There you go. I winked. Don't you have class soon? Steph shoved the dishes into the sanitizer and turned it on. Yeah, didn't realize the time. Guess that leaves you to bar. Please try and not let Di make any more drinks. Poor Kimmy and Trent got sick last week because of them, I begged as I washed my hands. I'll try. You know her, Steph assured me. Nodding, I tossed my apron into the dirty bin and grabbed my stuff. I waved to my sister as I headed out. Diamond was sulking at the register, the cute guy nowhere to be seen. Hey, you're going out, right? Diamond's face suddenly lit up with excitement. Yeah, class as usual. Be back in about two hours. I waved again, not stopping. Can you find out his name? Diamond begged. If I see him, I called back, not intending on trying. To my surprise, his car was parked right next to mine, and he was standing next to it, talking on his phone. I gave a wave as I opened my car door. Hang on, hang on, he stated into the phone. Barista lady! Sorry, I don't know your name. I laughed. It's cool. What's up? He seemed relieved. I have a meeting at Cobblestone Community College, but my GPS isn't working. Can you direct me, or at least to a GPS-friendly area? I had to laugh again. That's where I'm heading. I've got class. You can follow me. Fantastic. You're a lifesaver. His face lit up. Nah, just a bit of luck. You'd have it figured out. There's signs just about everywhere. It's all this town has. I shrugged. But my stepsister was begging to find out your name. That's your sister? He seemed surprised. Stepsister. And yes, the grim truth that plagues us all. I shrugged. Anywho, just follow me. It's Vincent. He chuckled at my commentary. Awesome. Nice to meet you, Vincent. I got into my car and waited for him to get ready to follow. Getting to the school was easy. It was only a few turns. I parked, leaving Vincent to figure out the rest of his gig, and took off for class. I only had a few minutes to spare when I finally took my seat. My normal seat was in the middle of the room. 
For whatever reason, everyone always seemed to avoid the first row, and since there were only 10 students in this class and about 15 chairs, that was easy to do. My school buddy and bestie, Callie, was deep in an excited conversation with the person in front of her. As I pulled out my notebook, she looked at me. She tossed her long, silky, dark hair behind her shoulder, the bangles on her arm giving a slight jingle. Arnessa, have you heard? She excitedly giggled at me. Apparently not. What's up? The person in front of her shook her head at me. Oh, come on. I know you don't care about this town, but how have you not heard? I live in a magical bubble called too much work, I stated flatly. Callie shook her head as she flailed her hands in front of me so quickly I couldn't see the henna design she had recently put on them. So, the queen's son, you know, the freaking prince, is in town. Apparently he's doing several guest speakings for various classes this week and a public speaking. Oh, that is actually kind of cool. I even had to wonder how I hadn't heard that one. You have to come to the speaking, Callie demanded, just about ready to fall out of her chair with excitement. I probably have work. Let me know how it goes, though. I opened my notebook to a free page. While it would be cool to see him, it was super unlikely we'd get to actually be close to him. You're killing me! Callie flapped her arms down on the desk. Oh, I heard he's speaking in a lot of the illusion classes. Maybe one of yours. I shrugged. I hadn't seen any announcements about guest speakers, so unlikely. Unless it wasn't announced since it's the prince and they wanted it a secret. We do get guest speakers fairly often, so it's possible though they're usually more local and less celebrity status. Callie just about shrieked with delight. You have to tell me if you meet him! I have that class tomorrow, so I'll let you know. Now that would be cool. I bet not many could say their prince helped out a class they were in. That was a fun idea. O-M-G, that remind- The teacher walked in, cutting off Callie's next comment.